If you're excited about Morgan Le Fay, then today is your day. Ahoy, my name is Duke Sloth, and today we're talking about everything Morgan Le Fay. There was a new trailer, there was a new teaser, and there's additional information that we can put together in order to find out a lot more about her abilities. We'll have a look at the trailer first, then talk a little bit about that, then get into the teaser and then put it all together. Before we get started, a very quick reminder that there's still a gem sale going on at the moment, and if you're going to buy some gem and you'd like to support me, you'll find my affiliate link down below that you can use, or you can use the code DUKESLOTH on Epic Games. And now let's roll the trailer. Trying to injure more than my pride, Merlin. <laughs> Apologies. Oh. Hello, old friends. We have so much to discuss. <laughs> Foolish Arthur Pendragon. Do you still trust your demonic advisor? His wicked magic led to Camelot's fall? <laughs> Olympus. Both will bend to my will. First of all, can we please take a brief moment to appreciate how cool Morgan looks and how cool this whole trailer looks and how cool this trailer was. The announcement trailers for New Gods lately have been absolutely top-notch and I hope they continue that way. And also, I personally really like the design of Morgan Le Fay, even though I know that's more controversial because some people wanted her to look more like the initial trailer. Now let's go a little bit through this trailer and see what finer details we can find. The very first thing that is shown to us when Morgan enters the scene in the most spectacular way is her armor. She actually has very, very heavy armor for both a female character and Smite, but also especially for a mage. If you leave aside the classic Smite skirt flaps as well as the combat high heels, then most of her armor is pretty much just heavy metal. And this is important because initially I wasn't sure what type of role she would be. So my data mining found out that she was a magical character, but she seemed to have certain melee capabilities. And obviously, as a mage, if you want to go melee, then you probably don't want to have typical mage stats. So I'm assuming we'll see a slightly higher defense reflected in her stats, no matter what her exact role will be. We get back to the role at the end of the video after we've gone through the abilities, but based on this design, I'm at least not expecting a traditional mage. Next, we can see that King Arthur starts charging her. While he approaches, she summons a sword into her hand. Shortly after that, a magical sword comes crashing down from the sky and lands in a circle of runes where King Arthur is. Following that, red static moves towards King Arthur's eye and he then sees illusions of a burning city. When the illusions fade, he is in a circle of smoke with Morgan, still holding a sword. The first part of this is very easy to explain. This is most certainly ability 1. The description for ability 1 from the data mining is, it has a deployable, there's a warm-up time and then an explosion of a sigil, there's a saw that has a radius of 12.5, this will be the landing radius, and the ability is split into A, B and C. In many ways this reminds me of Heimdall's one, who also summons a sword that crashes down, and if it's anything like the trailer, this seems to be a very similar mechanic, which would also explain the multiple stages, because it goes on the sky first and then comes down and everything. The question is if this is also responsible for summoning the sword in Morgan's hand. It could be that she just uses the sword as a melee weapon at all times, but at the same time she had a note for her basic attack being a hand projectile, so it could technically be that she needs to use her one to actually get her sword. This is not clear from the trailer since this could also just be a visual thing of her entering combat this way. The following illusions and the smoke are not necessarily part of the same ability. They might be, or it might be that the passive somehow plays a role here, but it could also be ability 3. The description for ability 3 is that it has a debuff and each basic attack extends the duration of the debuff by 1 second and the debuff also works with a passive. This also has an area of effects and a buff and some projectile sides. Additionally, it comes with a bonus hit too. So what this could mean is that this applies the illusion effect to the enemy and then basically covers them in the shroud, which is kind of like a set 3 maybe, like the blind. And then by hitting the enemy while in this state, the illusion effect will be extended or the shroud effect will be extended 
And while you fight them in this area, you have certain buffs, certain damage buffs, or they get certain debuffs. It doesn't even necessarily have to be an area that is limited by the map, but rather maybe an effect that is like a constant blind that you keep applying to the enemy until you stop basic attacking them. The next thing we see in the trailer is Merlin missing his one, as usual, and Morgan responding by throwing a fireball at him. The fireball then splits into three separate projectiles that all stay relatively close together and hit Merlin. After Merlin is hit, he falls to the ground and you see red static around him, much like the one that went into King Arthur's eye when he was affected by the illusions. This could technically also be ability 3, since it mentions these multiple projectiles, but it could also be ability 2, where we don't have much information, just that there's a deployable, deploy mesh, and a projectile. Either way, much like the first ability, it seems to apply an additional effect. But what we see after is Morgan disappearing into smoke and reappearing in another place. This is not something that I could find in the abilities, and it could also be ability 2, again, that has very limited information, or it could be tied to another ability, or it could not be part of a kit at all and just be a style effect for the trailer. But the next thing, I'm very certain, is part of a kit. We see both King Arthur and Merlin kind of starting to get absorbed. Some red energy is coming out of them. At the same time, the smoke around them, which was seemingly caused by the illusions, also clears up. In return, Morgan's sword gets supercharged. After she picks it up, it actually starts floating, and I really hope it does that in-game and you can kind of swing it without using her hands. And she then creates additional magical blades on the sword. Then she slashes the air in front of her, and through that, a projectile seems to come out of the sword. It seems like this energy is transferred forward. And I think I have a pretty good idea what this means. From the first leak, we know that she likely has an ability called Sigil Mastery, which is probably her passive, or at least linked to her passive, which relies on runes. My impression from this trailer is that hitting an enemy with a damaging ability marks them and activates the corresponding rune. And this seems to be true for both the sword as well as the fireball, because both Merlin and King Arthur are affected. The ultimate, on the other hand, is noted to be based on marks specifically, which are probably once again these runes. So what I think is that we are seeing her ult here, and it leads to her sword being charged depending on the amount of enemies she has marked by hitting them beforehand. In the data mining of this ability, it says the ultimate works as a projectile shot with up to three shots during six seconds of time, and after those six seconds, the player will be kicked out of the ability. We also know that the ability can come in five different sizes, scaling from 1.5 to 3.5. So my impression is that the ultimate supercharges the sword and then you have three of these slashes that we see at the end to fire off projectiles at the enemy. If you've played League of Legends, Riven comes to mind here. The size scaling also makes a lot of sense in this context, since when you're using this early in lane in a 1v1, then it makes sense that it isn't that big because you're just trying to hit one target, whereas in a team fight, you want to hit this on many enemies, so if the projectile is bigger after you hit them with other stuff, that is very synergistic. But that's not all, we also have the secondary teaser that gives us more information. Kitten of Doom posted this on Twitter today, and it's essentially another one of those diary entries from Morgan Le Fay with multiple hints. Let's read it first. Focus. Strategy. Determination. This life-sized game of chess we play is not simply about the placement of pieces scattered around the board, but more so about the internal conversation of if this, then that, taking place in your opponent's mind. Plant a new seed or change the direction of the sun and determine a new course for your foe, one they've established as logical in their own mind, as an attack from within. My kingdom is waiting. To know the depth of what Dragonflight can create establishes true mastery of all forms of power. To feel that power rush through my fingertips and summon a beast out of thin air is a constant reminder that I am the wielder of my own destiny. I can feel my heart pounding like a drum through my veins, pumping life through me like a shroud of wildfire, engaging my every muscle. I will continue to train day after day until there are none left to challenge me. I am capable of defeating all who walk in my path and I grow stronger every day. My kingdom is waiting. So the first page once again reiterates that she plays mind games with her opponents, even though it sounds like the mind games go beyond what we saw in the trailer, so it's going to be interesting if there are other factors coming into play that we can't tell from the abilities yet. But on the second page, we once again find two capitalized words in the middle of a sentence, 
probably hinting at ability names. That is Dragonflight on one hand and Shroud of Wildfire on the other. So along with Sigil Mastery we likely know three ability names now. Shroud of Wildfire sounds like the illusions that King Arthur is affected by where he sees the burning city as well as the smoke effect around him afterwards. Dragonflight could refer to the fireball projectile or it could refer to the part where she disappears and then reappears as a mobility ability with more of a emphasis on the flight. We know that her data mining also mentions a dragon in multiple other places, dragon preview as well as dragon tied to a deployable somehow, but I think that might just be the dragonflight name because I think if we actually had a dragon in her kit then they would likely want to show that in the trailer. Could be a budget restriction of course, but I feel like they would have at least hinted at it. But wait, there's even more. As some of you correctly pointed out in the last leak, there are runes on top of the page. And these are on both of these book teasers that we've seen so far, so you can see a total of four different runes. And here I want to thank Dylan C on Twitter who pointed out to me that these runes are also on the Smite logo that they changed to today. So we can see all five runes that she will have on the Smite logo. If any one of you has any clue what they stand for, let me know in the comments. And there are also these pink rocks around both of the teasers. There was some speculation last time I asked you guys what you thought it would be. Suggestions were dragon scales, petals, maybe something connected to the number of petals, which is nine, or maybe handmade soap bars from hotel rooms. What has changed in the second teaser is that there are no longer nine, there are only eight, so I think the number speculation doesn't end up. And they are flipped upside down. I still have no idea what that is supposed to signify though. It could be dragon scales, but then they kind of look different between them as well, so a bit confusing to me. But now that we've dug deeper into the kit, let's talk about the role. Again, based on her armor and visual design, I don't think that she'll be a traditional mage. And I also don't really think that she'll be a mage hunter at this point. She seems to have some ranged attacks, but it seems that a lot of her damage revolves around having that sword and using melee attacks. Also design-wise, hunters and smite are usually not really heavily armored. This leads me to believe that she's either going to be some very damage-focused guardian type, or a magical assassin with a heavy emphasis on ranged abilities. Ultimately, she could also be something between all of that and not exactly conform to the traditional roles that we have in Smite. Since she utilizes illusions, ranged damaging abilities, as well as melee attacks from what it seems, maybe she can opt into more bruiser-focused solo builds or more burst-heavy jungle-slash-mid builds. What I don't expect her to be is a support-focused guardian because I think then we would have seen that reflected in her trailer more. We will learn more about that today or tomorrow in the Closer Look, and when we do, I will of course update you here. If you want to stay updated when that happens, click like and subscribe, or I will go to my garage, hide in the corner, stare at my home gym, and contemplate if it's harder for me to find the time to work out, or thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. That is Zetnik Walker, Dwayne Brennan, Lander25 Green, Zelaria, Zed the Undead, Nevitz Jr., Rawas, Angel, Zeferoli, and everyone else you see here.